Good morning and welcome to Christchurch Without Walls for Sunday the 31st of January. If you've been past Christchurch recently, you may well have noticed a poster on the board outside which wishes everyone a Happy New Year and then explains that whilst our buildings are closed, you can still find Christchurch online. And this is part of our virtual presence, our YouTube service each Sunday. It's not quite the same as meeting in person. We don't get that same nodding in someone's direction or a a smile or a wave. But we still have an opportunity to talk together, to have a cup of coffee together in our Zoom coffee rooms following the service. These are getting fuller by the week and it's been really good to see so many of you as parts of that after service time. If you haven't done that yet, can I encourage you to do it today? Instructions on how you can join in were in the email that was sent out before the service. If you didn't get that email and you're here by some other means, then please either mention something in the YouTube chat if you're watching as part of the premiere, or just send us a message via our Facebook page and we'll send you the details. Now the normal run of church events is a little different this year, but Lent is still happening. This year, we're going to be running a Lent course. It's going to be done virtually. And here's a short trailer. Mr. Navarsky, please follow me. While you were in the air, there was a military coup in your country. The Republic of Krakosia is under new leadership. Krakosia! <laughs> I don't think he gets it. I'm going to need the passport also. No, 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 no. No, Mr. Navorsky, beyond those doors is American soil. You are not to leave this building. Next! Next! She's a wild stallion. You help me to win her heart and you'll never go hungry again. Officer. My friends say you are stalling. What? Like a horse. Stand behind the O-line. Opa, this belongs you. Thanks. We headed for home? Uh, no, I am delayed a long time. You ever feel like you're just living in an airport? If that looks like something you'd enjoy being part of, details of how you can sign up will be available either through the email, which will be going out with the service next week, or on our Facebook page. The material you'll need will be sent out by PDF, or alternatively, I can post you out one of these if you'd like a a real physical copy. I can guarantee, practically, that I will remember to put the right postage on the envelope. So as we begin our time of worship this morning, let's just be quiet for a few moments. We worship our great and glorious God. He knows our needs, he hears our cries, he feels our pain and heals our wounds. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. So let's pray. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. We begin our time of worship this morning by singing Come. Now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, 
Now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through his Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore let us in penitence open our hearts for the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Collects, the special prayer for today. God of heaven, you send the gospel to the ends of the earth and your messengers to every nation. Send your Holy Spirit to transform us by the good news of everlasting life, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, 
from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet, like you, from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. 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 Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this, a new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits, and they obey him. 
news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I wonder if you have any hobbies. When I was little, I used to collect lots of different things, including stamps. Maybe you've used a stamp if you've ever sent a letter. All of the stamps we use in the UK have got the Queen's head on them, and so do our coins. This is because she is the ruler of the UK, and she has authority and she has power. So, who else in the world has authority? Let's have a look at some pictures. Can you guess who these people are? So here's the first one. Have a guess. Who do you think this person is? Okay, so this is Boris Johnson. He is the Prime Minister of the UK. And here's the second picture. I'm going to give you a bit of a clue. There's two people in this picture. Have a think of who you think these people might be. Okay, so these two are Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and they have just become President and Vice President of America. Okay, and here's the last one. I'm going to give you another clue for this one. This is a kind of a historic group of people. So these are Roman soldiers in this picture, and in Jesus' time, the Romans were in charge. Um, and they were the ones that were um, in power, and they had authority, and they ruled. Maybe you've learnt about the Romans at school. In today's reading, Jesus is teaching at the synagogue. Just like we go to church, Jesus was a Jew, um, and so he went to the synagogue. And the people were amazed at his teaching. And it was clear that Jesus had authority and power. But Jesus showed his power differently to the Romans, who were ruling at the time of Jesus. The Romans ruled by force and by might, but Jesus showed his power in a different way. He showed it by love. In today's Bible story, whilst Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, a man came in. The Bible says that this man was possessed by an impure spirit. He cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This man would have been an outcast from society. People would have had nothing to do with him, and he wouldn't have been allowed to go into public places. But Jesus was different. Jesus didn't ignore him. He loved him. Jesus healed the man, and everyone was amazed. They said, wow, what is this? A new teaching, and with authority. And there are lots of other stories in the Bible that tell of Jesus showing love to people who'd normally be ignored in Jesus' time. For example, the poor, children, women, and people of different races, such as the Samaritans. We should try and be different like Jesus, and show love to those who are normally left out. Maybe there's someone you know who's normally left out in the playground or sits on their own at lunch. Is there someone that never gets invited round to other people's houses for dinner or to birthday parties? I'm not very good at sport, so when we were playing ball games at school, I was usually left out. People didn't pass the ball to me because they knew that I wouldn't score. But one lesson, one of the other pupils included me by shouting, Pass it to Sarah! Pass it to Sarah! And it made me feel really special to be included in the game. So try and look out for people who are on their own or who aren't included and invite them to join in. It will make a big difference to them. Having said that, it's lockdown at the moment, so you might not be at school, but I'm sure we all know someone who's lonely and maybe you could give them a call or write them a letter or send them a drawing. And even in the UK, there are some of us who can't afford to buy food or who are homeless. Maybe you could help them by raising money for a homeless charity or by donating food to the food bank. In the UK, we're lucky to be able to practice our faith 
without being in any danger. But there are some countries in the world where it's really dangerous to be a Christian. And maybe you could send a letter or a picture to Christian children in one of these countries to show your support, so that they know they're not alone. The charity Open Doors UK has got details on their website. Here's a link on the screen, and it's also in the description below this video. We should also pray for those who are often left out, and also for those in authority. So I hope you'll join me later for our craft activity where we'll be making people paper chains to help us with our prayers. Good morning, everyone. It's so lovely to be with you. Now, our first reading from Deuteronomy is from a book in the Bible, which is not always one that we turn to readily. Deuteronomy literally means the second law. It reaffirms the covenant between God and the Israelites. It is not a legal textbook. However, the law is not just being promulgated, it is being preached. Divine instruction is being laid on the heart, applied and explained, and the people are being challenged to choose life. In our reading, the Lord is raising up a prophet from among their own people who can speak the Lord's word to his people when they come to dwell in the promised land so that they do not get waylaid by the sinfulness of the people who they invade. But the reason I have begun with Deuteronomy is because there are some moving and helpful nuggets in it. And during this last most difficult year, which we have all been suffering, there are two verses which I have clung to, and they have been of a great help. They are both in chapter 33. The first one is in verse 12. And here the Lord is talking about Benjamin. But we can claim these words for ourselves. And it says, Let the beloved of the Lord rest secure in him, for he shields him all day long. And the one the Lord loves rests between his shoulders. What a comforting picture that is. Imagine yourself safely clinging to the Lord, your cheek against his, a secure place to be. And it's something which we all need in these dark and sometimes frightening times. And in verse 27 of chapter 33, the eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. Take comfort in those words during this difficult time. When you are feeling like you want to give up, just remember God is there to support us. It has certainly helped me to hold on to these words during the difficult times over the last year. I'm sure the man who was healed of an evil spirit by Jesus in our reading from Mark must have suffered greatly from his affliction. Then for him to encounter Jesus and hear his teaching, there must have been a real spiritual battle going on with this poor man. But wouldn't you have loved to have been there and heard Jesus teach? I know that I would. Those who had that privilege recognised that there was something different about him, something unique, authoritative. He was not just another wise man saying wise things. His listeners instinctively understood 
that he knew what he was talking about. They were amazed. They had never met a teacher like this. Jesus' teaching had authority and they saw Jesus had confidence. He wasn't just sharing good ideas about God. He knew God. He was God. They may not have understood all that Jesus said, but that did not detract from the impact of his authority and his actions demonstrated power. For it was the demons in this poor man who recognised Jesus as God's Holy One. And they were scared, rightly so, because they knew that although they could ensnare people, they could not withstand Jesus' power. So, what does it mean, a man possessed by an evil spirit? It may refer to some demon possession, making him ritually unclean. Or it may be a way of describing the source of a particular form of illness, mental or otherwise. For this man, we do not know except that Jesus' teaching really got to him, causing the spirit to cry out in fear, what do you want with us? Have you come to destroy us? But in its fear, it proclaims he knows who Jesus is, the Holy One of God. You can see here there is a battle going on, battle for survival. But Jesus' words, or rather commands, be quiet, come out of him, distinguishes the spirit from the man himself. As the evil spirit leaves the man, causing him to shake, but the evil spirit came out shrieking. The battle was won as it only could be by Jesus. We are not told how the man now healed reacted or how he felt, but he was free to be the man God had created him to be. As Christians, are we concerned enough to recognise the areas of disease, pain and dismay in human lives and societies and allow ourselves to be the agents of God's power to heal. It seems that wherever Jesus was, so much was new, a new order where all were invited to participate fully a new freedom in which all, regardless of status, could find liberation. A new teaching by which all could become disciples. May we never cease to be astounded by Jesus, his world order, and never tire of wanting to be part of his vision for a better world. Amen.
We're going to say the creed now together. This version features members of local churches, part of our ecumenical cluster. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. And the life everlasting. Amen. 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 This Sunday, we are called to recognise God's authority. Let us invite our Heavenly Father to direct our thinking and our prayers. Let us give God the highest place in our lives. We give thanks for the efficiency and progress of the vaccination programmes in our town and in our country. We ask you, Lord, to be with our leaders, that they may justly, fairly and effectively continue to distribute vaccines here and across the world. We give thanks that the vast majority of people invited have come forward for vaccination and found the process to be straightforward and comforting. Deaths in the UK are tragically in excess of 100,000. Let us take a moment to pray for all lives cut short and the families so devastated by the pandemic. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Many are finding the current lockdown more stressful than the first. We pray for people and families frustrated by the constant uncertainty. Be near all our children and young people whose learning and early lives have been so disrupted. Grant to parents a sure knowledge of thy love that they may guide their children with courage and faith. We pray the plans to reopen schools may be prepared carefully by authorities, schools and teachers, then implemented when it can be done safely. Jesus Christ, our brother and our Lord, you lived on earth with family and friends. In the midst of this pandemic, be with us in our homes, be the centre of our lives and strengthen the love we have for one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We give thanks for the many ministries within our church family, the time and talents spent in the provision of pastoral care, for all the tireless work and expertise that goes into Christ Church without walls, the ministry of Reverend Simon and Jill, our readers, the administration of council, and the faithful work of our wardens, musicians, and choir. We pray for the future of Christ Church's witness under God's authority. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Joe Biden, President of the USA, and his administration striving to unite that divided nation and working to implement a program to tackle the virus. We pray for the people of Russia and all nations around the world seeking peace, justice and freedom. In Yemen, torn by war, Christians support the work of the Ras Morbat Clinic, faithfully run by Muslim doctors and nurses in the compound of Christ Church Anglican Church, Aden. Last week, UNHCR recognised their humanitarian and distinguished medical service. With a fear of resurgence in Iraq, 
we pray for the congregation of St. George's Baghdad, led by Canon Fias Jerjes. Dear Lord, bring thy peace to the Middle East. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, be with us this week. Meet with us each morning and in every situation throughout the day. Help us to draw on your strength and wisdom, that we might be faithful and true, following the example given to us by Jesus. You alone are our strength, our shield. To you alone may our spirit yield. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Believing the promises of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Our final song of worship and praise this morning is O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. So we say our closing prayer together. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, 
and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So may God give to you and to all those you love his comforts and his peace, his light and his joy in this world and the next. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit remain with you all, now and forever. Amen.